Hello, my strong, strong friends, and welcome to my eight-week strength and muscle building program, Uplifted. This program is made to help you grow. Let's get lifting and get uplifted. Gentlemen, when you think of an alpha male, you probably think of a dude who's big and strong. But in my opinion, a true alpha male is someone who also has the perfect balance of style and substance. Welcome to my 30-day ab program. There are a lot of familiar movements, but there are plenty of others that you probably haven't seen before. You now have everything you need to build that six-pack you always wanted. Foundations of Fitness Nutrition is designed to be a comprehensive and applicable guide to help everyone make more educated choices about the food they eat. What is up everybody? Alex Freaky here, Gat Sports Senior Sales Manager for uh, Bodybuilding.com. Um, while you're here in Great Boise, Idaho to hit some arms this morning, I am here at Bodybuilding.com for some meetings. But before that, I wanted to get to you guys a workout before we get to the real work. So we are going to hit some arms today, some biceps and triceps, show you some tips along the way to help you grow those stubborn biceps and triceps. Now, from the camera, you don't know how tall I am. I'm six foot four. So my biceps are very, very long. It took me a long time to grow them. And until I learned in the proper way to grow them for myself, you know, I want to pass that information along to all of you out there. So first, we are going to get started with a seated dumbbell curl. Now, with a seated dumbbell curl, I'm not huge on monstrous weight. Um, biceps, they really, really respond well to contraction and squeezes. So when you come up, try to supinate, supinate, means you actually turn your wrist in the outside direction to get a better contraction. So come up and turn it. Also think like you're throwing a piece of paper over your shoulder into a garbage can or something fun. Notice, as you notice as I come up, I'm supinating, turning my wrist outside, but I'm squeezing the muscle. And then I'm releasing it slowly so it gets a very good negative. So you're working the muscle in both directions. Now, some people out there may do curls with heavy weight and they don't really get a good motion. They usually they kind of a, a jerk pull motion, kind of throwing it with their shoulders. That's not going to grow the biceps to the optimal level that they can grow just because you're not really engaging them fully. So make sure you're straight squeezing and stretching all the way down. Don't worry about the weight. Don't worry about how fast the motion is. Slower, the better. And one of my coaches once told me that it's not the weight you lift, it's how you lift the weight. So what I like to do with this is about three sets of 10 to 15 reps per arm um, to really get started for my bicep workout. Um, you can do a combination of different um, rep ranges where you have, you, you go up to five on each side. What I mean by that, you'll curl one, one, two, two, and then two on the other side. And then all the way up to five. This is really going to get the blood flowing for your to start your arm workout, kind of like a pre-exhaust. So you overwork them before you get to the other motions. Starts to burn after a while. This is what you're looking for. One more. So, a good start to the bicep workout, get the blood flowing. And also, too, if you've ever seen some people flex in between sets, especially biceps, you really, really get the blood 
inside the muscles. Wiggle them around, make sure the blood flow is flowing fully through your arms so you don't cramp. Good squeezes. Our first question is from YouTube. How do you increase vascularity? Is it based on body fat or a pre-workout supplement? So that's a really great question. Um, increasing vascularity uh, is a number of different things. Now, of course, there are those supplements out there that contain great vasodilators and muscle and volumizing agents that help increase blood flow, which will increase the size of the blood vessel during training. But mainly it is, you are correct, your body fat percentage. When your body fat percentage is lower and your muscle um, levels grow, um, your muscle percentage grows, you actually pull your blood vessels and veins to the top of your um, dermal layer. So you can actually see them better. It has not, and also too, it has a little bit to do with genetics. Some people's genetics don't have as uh, vascular of a, uh, a structure, but in essence, it is body fat. Another question from YouTube. Why do you use a weight belt when doing arms? Ah, okay. So I've been using a weight belt for 12 years. And it kind of, it's kind of like my blankie. <laughs> so I, um, I, I literally, I put it on every time to keep my waist at this level. Um, when, now, if you think about it this way, and you breathe out and in, out and in, it's going to increase the size of your waist um, over time. Now, starting at a young age, um, it literally kept my waist small. I've been a 34 waist since I was 19 years old, and I am now 31. So my waist has not expanded. Um, also, too. I like to keep my breathing in um, so I can actually have, have a stronger uh, breath, inhale and exhale, but the right way. I don't want to push out through my stomach. I want everything from uh, right, my diaphragm. Can you combine coffee with creatine monohydrate? Good question. Very good question. So combining coffee and creatine monohydrate are almost, um, not necessarily I'm going to say contradictive, but creatine helps pull water into the muscles, which coffee can actually dehydrate your muscles. So combining the two, um, if, you're, if this is what you're asking pre-workout, I'm not going to recommend that. Um, have your coffee pre-workout and have your creatine monohydrate post-workout, which would be the best and optimal way to use them. All right, so next exercise we're going to do is we're going to do a drag curl. Now a drag curl is simply dragging the weight dragging the weight to your stomach as uh, you guys are all familiar with the bent row, right? Bent over row. Well, very similar motion where the first part of the bent over row usually for everyone is you pull your arms. So what we're going to do, we're going to have good posture, stand up straight, don't ever hunch over or look down, always look forward. And then you're going to drag the weight to the stomach, squeezing the peak of the bicep and extending it out. Don't worry about contracting your shoulder blades, all bicep movement. And you can do this with very various amounts of weight, depending on how strong your biceps are at the time. Increasing, I always recommend starting with um, 30 to 40 pounds. This is a 40 pound bar, especially after the pre-exhaust. The squeeze and the release is most important. The weight is not, but if you want to increase the weight over time, I recommend increasing in five pound increments. So, drag curl, you're not getting that full contraction of the bicep, you're mostly getting right here. Um, this is really good for, like I said, when you're pulling you're bent over rows, but also it helps increase the strength of the peak of the bicep when you're pulling towards you. Question from Facebook, what is the best rep range for bicep growth? Now that's all gonna depend on um, the, the weight you're doing along with the, um, I guess the, the speed of your, your, uh, your reps. So my opinion uh, that's worked best for me is between 10 and 15 reps but a lighter weight, as you saw, I did 25 pounds, slow negative, and good squeeze. So in that rep range with that type of tempo, so think about a two second up with a muscle one, a two second squeeze, and then a two second down negative motion 
for about two seconds. So that tempo would be the best for growth with lighter weights. Do you train fasted or what is your pre-workout meal? Oh, well, that's really, really, really good, really good question. Now, um, it all depends on how your metabolism works. Now, me, I'm an ectomesomorph. So my metabolism is very fast. So I actually have to eat, before I train, um, I usually train about five to 6 p.m. at night. I eat about four meals before I train. My body is fueled up. Now, training fasted, there's some scientific studies out there that sometimes you will break down muscle. But make sure if you do, are training fasted, you are having your branched chain amino acids in your, um, during your intro workout, um, it actually, is, as well as I have right here. So you don't, it'll help cat, not catabolize or break down the muscle. So it all depends on how your metabolism is in, in all essence. What is the story behind your tattoos? All right. So... Some of you um, out there have maybe seen me on the WDB Tough Enough show on USA, on uh, John Wick, or on uh, NBC Blacklist. In all of these places, I played a Russian. I am a, I'm, I'm Russian by descent. All my tattoos are Russian in some way, shape, or form, but my tattoos are all a sheet of armor. So I did that because Alexander in Russian means defender of man. So I figured... I would put armor on me so I can be a hero to people that may, may, need, uh, may need something, uh, may be in, in time of need, or maybe even some motivation. So I really wear this, this tattoo as a symbol for what my name means. All right, next, we are going to go to a low pulley curl, double bicep um, dumbbell curl. Now, this I call the freaky arm finisher. Now, um, it is simply a low pulley on the uh, low row machine. You're gonna have your arms up. Don't drop them or have them too high. Right in front of you, keep the elbows stable and pull towards you. So we're gonna do 10 to 15 reps, nice and slow. Like I said, good squeeze, nice release. Immediately following this exercise, I'm gonna turn to the side, grab lighter dumbbells. These are 10 pounds, that's all you need. Slow up, good contraction, good negative for the same amount of reps. Now with this movement, this exercise, the superset, it's usually supposed to be done at the end of a workout because after three sets of this, three sets of 20, you're doing 60 reps at the end of your workout. They're really, really gonna, actually 60 or more reps at the end of the workout, they're really gonna burn out the biceps and get ready for your tricep workout. So, low pulley, uh, superset it with double dumbbell bicep curl. Is it necessary to take an intra-workout drink with carbs or protein? Actually, um, good question. Now, intra-workout drinks could be that of many different uh, types. My intra-workout right now is Flex BCAs, of course, by GetSport, our plant-based fermented branch chain. Um, I recommend branch chain amino acids. Sometimes you can mix those with carbohydrate powder, like a carbotene, um, which will help um, fuel you for increased energy. Um, carbohydrates are a great source to increase ATP. What would be a great alternative if I don't have a pulley machine? If you don't have a pulley machine, good question. So you're gonna get a lightweight. And think of it this way. You can do it seated if you'd like. Hold the weight out, squeeze. This will keep the tension on the bicep the entire time. 
but you can't go too heavy with this because your arms will start to drop or you put too much pressure on the shoulder muscle. How many times a week do you prefer to train arms? Um, well, since you are using arms when you, when, you, when you train back, you do use arms when you train chest for the tricep extension. Um, honestly, I train them fully once um, by themselves um, just because they get more work with chest and back. Awesome. So let's do one more set of this freaky finisher superset for your biceps. have as your post-workout shake, if any? Oh, great question. My favorite question, actually. Post-workout is probably my favorite category as far as nutrition. Now, what I use is, I use actually, which I'm gonna mix up at the end of the workout, I use our Adenoflex, which has five grams of creatine monohydrate in it, two on one ratio of branched chain amino acids, and <clears throat> your Carbotene, which is carbohydrates. The reason why is because your body gets depleted of glycogen during the workout. And after the post-workout is when you really need to restore that glycogen. And then about 30 minutes after that shake, so this shake will be mixed up right after I, I rack the weights and go home. After that, we'll either be about 30 grams of whey protein or an actual meal, depending on my time constraint. What is the difference between creatine monohydrate and creatine hydrochloride, and which should I use? Perfect question. Creatine monohydrate is a creatine that actually helps pull water into the muscles. Now, its main use is post-workout. Using five grams or more of creatine monohydrate pre-workout usually is not as effective as you would think, but will also, it will help volumize the muscles. But pre-workout is creatine hydrochloride. Now, getting a little sciencey here on you, creatine hydrochloride is bonded with a hydrochloride component to help dissociate in water very fast. It's a conjugated bond which means the bonds are evenly distributed, which helps easy, easily break down for the body to use. Now that is also, creatine hydrochloride is weight dependent. So depending on your weight is how much you have to use, which usually is instructed on the bottle. So use that pre-workout and use creatine monohydrate post-workout in a simple carbohydrate like carbotene for better absorption. Jackie on Facebook wants to know, have you ever taken a fat burner? If so, do you have any opinions on which one I should take? Well, fat burners for me are very, very strange because they, even though I can drink, for example, our Psycom with 350 milligrams of caffeine and be fine, fat burners are very concentrated, which they hit me harder and they actually make me feel a little jittery. One I found that works really good for me, especially during contest time for fasted cardio, is Jet Fuel Pyro. The reason why is it doesn't contain an ingredient called Yohimbi. Yohimbi for me makes me have a little bit of anxiety and, and a little shakiness. So. I actually use products that doesn't then have Yohimbi. So Jet Fuel Pyro, they actually call it the feel good fat burner. Helps you burn fat, actually really good mental well-being from the ketones, as well as sweat a lot during your training. So try Jet Fuel Pyro, I think it'll be a very good one for you. Do you take glutamine? Ha, yes. Glutamine is one of my favorite amino acids. Um, I usually mix it in with my post-workout um, the reason being glutamine, now a good fact about glutamine is in 70% of, um, I'm sorry, in, after post-training you lose 70% of your glutamine storage in your immune system. So that's why, have you heard that old wives tale about don't go outside in the winter after you dip done playing sports? 
Sort of the reason why is because your immune system's weakened after the intense training you do. So five grams of glutamine post-workout will help do that, uh, re boost the immune system as well is glutamine is one of the main amino acids to cat uh, catalyze, which means start the reaction of protein synthesis or protein breakdown to rebuild muscle. All right, now let's go on to some triceps. Now, this I call the B pack rope um, extension push down, um, named after Ben Pakulski, which a uh, friend of mine that showed me the workout. Now, what you do, and the reason why you do it this way, you stand far back. Now don't extend out, keep your, elbow, or your elbows to the side at the same point the entire time. What you're gonna do, you can do 10 reps, and it doesn't look like much of a motion. You're gonna do 10 reps. Squeezing the triceps, squeeze. What you're gonna do is take a big step in, do it again. The main reason you're doing this exercise like this is because of the fact that the angle change creates different tension on the triceps. And then in again, where you normally would do them right here, keeping the elbows at the same spot, squeezing the entire time as well. Now during a tricep extension like this, or a push down rather, you make sure you don't raise your shoulders up. Keep them down so the tension stays on the tricep. Squeeze. Now, this motion can be done at the beginning of the workout to get the blood flow um, into the triceps really well, or post-training triceps to really destroy them at the end as a finisher. Um, usually do 10 reps, 10 reps, and 10 reps, about three sets. You get a lot of repetitions in here to start your workout or even end it. So again, make sure you're a good length away so you can take three steps in, doing 10 reps per. Step in, again. Step in, again. And that is a really good one to start or end your tricep workout with. YouTube wants to know, what is your favorite cardio workout? Well, you know, uh, like most, cardio is not my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> But it is necessary, especially to be to get in good condition. Favorite cardio workout is honestly, it's uh, it's either a wad from CrossFit. Uh, I really like the intensity and the short amount of time that wads take. Um, a really good one is a 300 meter row with 24, 25 kettlebell swings with about for myself 30, 35 pounds, and then 20 sit-ups. Rotate it four times for for time, which is shown to me by one of my coaches as well. Or I like to do high intensity interval training on a spin bike with for a 15 second sprint and 45 second medium pace um, over and over for 15 minutes. How long do your workouts usually take? Whew, um, that's really all depending on the type of workout I'm doing. Now, if I'm doing a leg workout, usually the rest times are longer. So I'll be doing it about probably an hour and a half. Usually all said and done from entering the gym to leaving it's one full hour. I don't believe in staying there for three hours and training. Usually you get to an overtraining state, um, especially you'll be depleted a lot of your carbohydrate into your glycogen. So usually about an hour. If I start swinging the weight, should I lower it or just continue and be okay with using momentum? Yeah, great question. Lower it, absolutely 110% lower the weight. Again, it's not about how much weight you're lifting, it's about how you lift the weight. Muscles respond to form. Form over weight all day long. The reason why is you're gonna get more from a lighter weight as far as work from your muscles to grow them. Muscles need to be broken down from, you know, slightly tearing them from training. So if you have momentum and using more 
motion than you would using a lighter weight, not focusing on that muscle group you're working, you're not gonna get as much work done and growth. What is your current caloric intake? My current caloric intake, which I have just decreased, um, I decided to come down in weight um, about a month ago, I was about 260 pounds. Right now I'm sitting about 250. Uh, my caloric intake was 5,000. Now it's hovering around the 3,000 mark. Are you team crunchy or team creamy for peanut butter? <laughs> oh man, I think my, 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 I gotta say I'm crunchy. Crunchy's good, man. It's, it's just, it's just, you know, the texture, it's something different. Awesome. Good questions. Really good questions. All right. Next, what we're going to do, is called a pause lying skull crusher. Again, this was shown to me by one of my coaches um, years ago when we started training together. Now, this is really good when your triceps just like this are pretty exhausted because it's not that heavy of a weight for some. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay on the floor in kind of like a sit up position. Grab the easy bar curl in its inner portions. And then we're going to explode up and squeeze. Real nice, slow. And I want you to stop, release your fingers again. this, you're gonna do about 10 to 12 reps. Feel free to increase the weight as you see fit. But by the time you get to your probably second and a half set, your muscles aren't gonna to wanna to push this weight off the floor. Explode. Release, oh, get a good negative. Explode. So, this exercise is absolutely really good for it, the also in strength training um, because it's a, a explosive movement from a stop position. As some power lifters out there may see and they understand that you don't want, power lifting is not about momentum, it's about exploding from a very dead stop. So with this, you can increase the weight, increase the strength of your triceps and the explosion from your triceps. So again, from the floor, we're going to explode and squeeze. Bring it back down, fingers released, squeeze. Slow, up. Oh. Three more. As you see that, there's a really good motion. Um, other than the, the traditional skull crushers, which you're on a bench, you're laying down. This actually gives you, if you don't have a spotter, it's really good because it floors your spotter. You just let it go if you, have, if you can't get it up. So it's a great workout for your triceps. Give it a shot. What is your favorite song to listen to while you work out? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I have to say, probably anything from Under Oath. Um, it's an old punk band from, um, gosh, the early 2000s. A friend of mine is the, is the keyboard player. I've been listening to them since I was a kid and um, probably very, very motivating, positive. Um, doesn't, no cursing, nothing like that, but the message is really positive. What is your favorite staple meal? Oh man, perfect. Um, I live in Arizona, so as you know, Mexican food is huge in Arizona. Um, my staple meal, has to be ground turkey with um, lower sodium taco seasoning mixed with salsa and rice. Usually I just spoon that up. It's really easy. You can make a lot of it. It's good for meal prep. YouTube wants to know, does this version of the Skull Crusher put more pressure on the elbow joint versus a regular Skull Crusher? Um, good question. And I'm going to have to say, um, from my experience with this movement, I haven't ever felt pressure on my my, my my elbow. The reason why is because when you're laying on a bench doing a skull crusher, you're actually going to be stabilizing as well with your, 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 your elbow the entire time instead of the stopping motion. So you are getting some release from the, the elbow joint. 
What are your thoughts on doing partial reps at the end of a regular set? Very good question. Partial reps are, are good as well because it, it does um, have some carryover. Now, when you're, um, you're exhausted, you can't get the rep up fully, doing that partial rep will still get work done. I always like to say work, some work is better than no work. So if you can get 10, but you can do partial stuff 15, if you ever, ever watch Pumping Iron, Arnold always said to train past that point of failure. And those partial reps will get you that past that point of failure. Do you ever incorporate BFR training? BFR training? Blood flow restriction. Oh, gotcha, occlusion training. Um, I use a different term for it. I've never done it per se. Um, I've seen a lot of power lifters do it. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, it, you could make the argument that, you know, it's dangerous yet effective because of all the blood flows in that muscle and filling it. Um, I don't have experience with it. I, I always thought it was uh, risky for my opinion, just because of the way I've seen some people use it and I don't have any good teaching on it. Awesome. You guys are amazing questions. Keep them coming. All right, so next tricep workout we're going to do is a wide grip, elbow tucked tricep push down. So get the lat pull down bar, as you see here. You're gonna go out to where it bends. Now, I'm gonna use about, say, 50 pounds to start with. You're gonna pull it down, and you're gonna keep your elbows tucked in, not out, but in. And you're gonna push it down, and hopefully your um, lat pull down bar doesn't spin, and you're gonna twist it and squeeze. Up, keeping the elbows and shoulders down, squeeze. As you can see, I'm releasing it slower to get max to maximize that tension on the tricep. So coming at you guys this way, you're gonna be like this, and you're gonna be pushing it. It's, it's very awkward at first, but heavy weight isn't really gonna make a difference whether you're light or heavy on this. It's all about that squeeze and negative contraction for the triceps. You're getting a lot of love for your shoes, so uh, where did you get your shoes? <laughs> zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. So these, um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a cheap shoe buyer. I, I gotta admit, I go for the, the, the stuff that's really cheap, but I finally splurged on Nike Metcons. Um, these are the most comfortable flat shoes for training. Really light, I feel like a cheetah in these things. Um, try them out, they're really comfortable. What is your go-to cheat meal? Pizza, all day. My past life I was a Ninja Turtle, I think. You know, I bet her shredder. Um, I, uh, I really love pizza. Pepperoni pizza, all day long, nothing fancy on it, and I will devour it. Actually kind of surprised since you live in Arizona. <laughs> Do you binge on any TV shows right now on Netflix? Oh man, yeah, actually. Um, I, so my wife for a long time said, I should watch Dexter. And I'm like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. Three years she's been telling me to watch it. We finally started it, it is amazing. I am hooked on Dexter. Just the way that he's absolutely nuts. At the same time, he's actually helping society, which is a really strange concept. Um, but check it out there. Um, other than that, I watch lots of, um, I'm an anime guy. So I, I grew up on anime. So anything new that comes out, One Punch Man is really cool. So for you anime people out there, um, it's a little guy that, is, that knocks people out with one punch. He's amazing. Sarah on Facebook wants to know, if you can only have one GAT supplement for the rest of your life, what would it be? Man, one GAT supplement for the rest of my life. Uh, I gotta say, it's Nitroflex. I mean, that's our staple uh, product that our company was built on. Um, it's, I've been using it, I've been working for the company for four and a half years. I've been using it for four and a half years, um, and it's been nothing but amazing. Um, as, but I, I used Psycon today for the extra citrulline in there, but you, Nitroflex by far is my favorite supplement that we have. Favorite Ninja Turtle? <sighs> Gotta be, ha, have to be Raphael. Um, I, I, I just like that he's just all business, you know? 
he's all business. He just goes, I mean, he doesn't care about anything else, but he loves the girl and wants to beat up the bad guys. So um, we, uh, I want to actually go out there and talk to you guys about some of the, the, the supplements that you know, I brought here from Gat Sport today. Um, as I was mentioning and drinking, intro workout, I am drinking Flex BCAAs. This has seven grams of uh, plant-based amino acids. Now, a really, really good um, plug for this product. Now, a lot of people don't know what plant-based fermented is. Um, it's microbial fermentation from corn to break down into amino acids. So it's become really, really sustainable product as well as vegan friendly. So um, really tasty. These products taste amazing and it's really good for intra workout to help reduce soreness and increase your endurance and repair muscle. Um, Psycon was my pre-workout of choice today. The reason why is because it has 8.2 grams of citrulline malate. So this product gives you an incredible pump and I hope you guys think I have one today, but pretty good. Um, Post-workout, which I will mix up right after this, are these two. Adenoflex mixed with Carbotene. The reason why is Carbotene acts as simple sugar. Many, many moons ago, back in like the 70s, creatine was uh, recognized as like the um, miracle supplement for building muscle because it was used in grape juice. Now using grape juice because a simple sugar helps spike insulin for nutrient absorption. This will do the same for you as grape juice, um, but it's gonna sometimes taste better than grape juice. Some grape juices you get, but not full with tons of sugar. So the five grams of creatine, the, the two on one ratio of branched chain amino acids, 500 milligrams of agmatine sulfate and tart cherry for, for use for anti-inflammatory really is a post-workout combination that can't be beat. So these are my staple supplements. I gotta bring them with me everywhere. Um, usually they're in little Tupperware containers because these are kind of cumbersome to, to lug around. Um, but the next thing I wanted to just chat with you guys about real quick, and any questions come in, please let me know. Um, I'm nursing a shoulder injury right now that I have no idea what's going on. So from all the stuff we've been doing, this, all these have zero effect on my shoulder and I'm getting it checked out this week. Um, I'm having a lot of rotation issues. I can't really bench press too well um, or do too many chest movements that really bring my shoulder joint into play. And lateral raises and overhead presses are really difficult for me to do. But if you have an injury, there's always ways around that injury to train. You don't have to take weeks or days off. It's always legs. You can always train legs, arms, depending on what your injury is. Um, ask one of your trainers or coaches or a professional what you can do and what you feel comfortable doing in the gym. Um, and lastly that I want to discuss is I am one of the, uh, like I mentioned, one of the sales uh, managers for the company here at Gap Sport. And when I'm traveling, when I'm on the road, um, in and out of meetings, I always get working out as a priority for my health and also for the future. So whether how busy you are, um, whether you travel a lot, um, whether you have time constraints, there's always something you can do. Um, any fitness is better than no fitness. And you don't have to be uh, a bodybuilder or a competitor to understand that where you, um, your health and your future are really important. So um, on top of training, I'm always getting that workout in, food and nutrition are monstrous. The better you eat, the better you will look, the better you will feel. Um, you know, cheat meals are okay, you know, but usually they're, they're a, a mental thing where you don't really need them as much as you think, even though your body craves them when you can't have them or take them away. So always keep in mind nutrition, training, and rest. Those three things are huge. That whole no days off term doesn't really apply very well because your body needs to rest to grow. And that's when it grows the best is when you have more ample amount of rest. Questions? What is the benefit of the wide grip for pushdowns versus a close grip? So I'm gonna turn to the side. So you have close grip. Watch where my tricep contracts in this direction. Okay, so it's going to hit here. The wide grip, when I do this, hits here. It's the other side of the tricep. You have two portions of the tricep. So close will hit your outer, um, wide will hit the inner portion. What are your thoughts on the keto diet? Oh. Keto, that is a really good uh, question where um, for myself, with my type of body type, I cannot do keto because I, I will lose a lot of weight very fast because my body is like a carb factory where it can just eat carbs and sustain. Now that's not for everybody, um, but keto is really good for people who, um, you know, 
don't do so well with carbohydrates. Uh, maybe celiacs, for example, be, if you have uh, uh, intolerance to gluten, which gluten's in everything usually. Um, but also too, it, it's really good for those people who have a history of um, cancer in their family because carbohydrates uh, act as a um, catalyst to cellular respiration. Now, cellular respiration is a rebuilding of cells um, and reproducing of cells. And usually the cellular respiration gets out of hand in a, in a cancer situation where um, carbohydrates are the, one of the main sources of that. Now, this is not medical information. This is just studies that are done that um, keto helps um, people that have a high risk of cancer in their family uh, as, a, as a preventative. Um, also, too, really good at losing weight. Um, you know, for those people who don't do well with carbs, like I said, um, it's really good to trim down. Also, you can build muscle on keto. Um, a, lot, a lot of people have that misconception, but um, I think it's very good, especially if you are um, looking to lose some weight um, and get in better health. Do you prefer to work out in the morning, afternoon, or night? I work out at night. Uh, my body, uh, usually early in the morning, doesn't really operate too well. Um, mentally, I'm good. Physically, I have to have a few meals in me. Usually, I eat about three or four meals prior to training. So I recommend uh, for myself, usually I train at night, but it all depends on your schedule as well. All right, our last question, and this could make or break you. Oh, boy. Are you team pineapple on your pizza? <sighs> no. I'm a pepper. I'm a pepperoni guy. I only, I, it's, honestly, it's pepperoni. Um, I, I, I've been eating that since I was a kid. Um, I, I wish I could have anything else on it, but unfortunately, I can't. I like pineapple, um, but not on my pizza, unfortunately. So don't hate me, please. <laughs> all right, where can they all find you on social, YouTube? Where are you? So um, I am all over social media, of course, uh, spreading motivation and good gat cheer. Um, you can find me, my Instagram tag is at Alexander underscore and my last name Freaky, F-R-E-K-E-Y, yes, that is my last name. Um, and you can find me on also Facebook um, and of course Instagram, YouTube. I do have a channel, but I'm not on it as much, mostly on Instagram. So feel free to reach out, please DM me if you have any questions I can answer for you, especially anything training, nutrition, or get wise. So. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. Make sure you follow Gat Sport, uh, Gat Supplements on Instagram, myself, bodybuilding.com, and please always go to bodybuilding.com for your knowledge, your supplements, um, your workouts, everything. It's been an all-encompassing um, website that has been the leader in sports nutrition, and I have been in love with that this website for over 10 years, and it has been amazing being here and training with you today. So you guys all have a wonderful week. Compete harder. Hello, my strong, strong friends, and welcome to my eight-week strength and muscle building program, Uplifted. This program is made to help you grow. Let's get lifting and get uplifted. Gentlemen, when you think of an alpha male, you probably think of a dude who's big and strong. But in my opinion, a true alpha male is someone who also has the perfect balance of style and substance. Welcome to my 30-day ab program. There are a lot of familiar movements, but there are plenty of others that you probably haven't seen before. You now have everything you need to build that six-pack you always wanted. Foundations of Fitness Nutrition is designed to be a comprehensive and applicable guide to help everyone make more educated choices about the food they eat. 